Hi, Otto here for Bavarian Autosport. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to install our adjustable front camber kits. These replace the upper strut mount on BMW and Mini models that have a strut type front suspension. We'll be showing you the installation details. And when we do this job, remember we have to fully disassemble the strut assembly in order to install the new upper mount. That means we'll need our spring compressor and of course the Bentley repair manual for removal of the assembly from the vehicle and details on the disassembly of the actual strut being used on your BMW model. Now with that remember that everything you see here is available in our online store at bavauto.com. Now let's see how to do this job. Here we are at our vehicle. This happens to be an E36 M3. We have our stock upper strut mounts in place. This is the replacement camber and caster adjustable mount. We'll be installing these mounts in place of the stock upper mounts for both the left and the right sides. Note that the adjustable mount can be installed in three different positions within the strut tower. Here are our two adjustable mounts. Before installation, we must first determine how the mounts will be installed for left and right sides of the vehicle. Note that the bearing location on this stock M3 mount is more toward the rear of the vehicle to add additional caster. Most models will have the bearing in the center of the mount. Note how the center bearing plate can be moved in all directions. Also note that the two mounts are mirror images of each other. On most street cars, we will want to be reducing the negative camber. Therefore, we'll want to move the bearing toward the outside of the vehicle. Each of the mounts can be installed in three different positions, matching the three mounting holes in the strut tower. To determine which mount should be left and which should be right, place the mount in position over the stock mount, matching the stud positions. If our goal is to reduce negative camber, we want to be able to move the bearing plate toward the outside of the vehicle. Additionally, we typically would not want to reduce the positive caster on a street-driven car. This mount would be best in this position. Now do the same with the other mount. Here you can see that we have a lot of movement available for camber reduction but we're also reducing the positive caster. Move the mount through the three positions determine which position allows the bearing to have the most adjustability toward the outside and rearward directions on the vehicle. From these mock-ups, we've determined that we'll use this mount for the driver's side as it allows reasonable camber adjustment plus a good amount of positive caster, which produces stability. We'll use the other mount on the passenger side, oriented in the opposite direction to the driver's side. In other words, a mirror image. Mark the two mounts for left and right, as well as the forward-facing position. This will assure proper final assembly. All right, now that we have our strut assembly out of the vehicle, we're ready to disassemble it so that we can install the camber kit mount. Now the mount replaces the stock upper mount, so we do have to fully disassemble our strut assembly. This is also a great time to install fresh shocks or springs if that's in your plan. We'll use our spring compressor tool to disassemble the strut we're going to do that off camera, and you can watch our other video on how to use the spring compressor to disassemble and assemble a strut. We'll come back when we have this disassembled and ready to go for the next stage. All right, now you see here an assortment of various different strut styles, different camber kit styles, as well as different upper mount types. This is the unit we showed you fully assembled, 
that we disassembled. We removed the spring using the spring compressor. Let's just show you how this one goes together. This is the individual mount with the bearing in it and spring plate. They're both separate pieces. Now we already have the nut off because we've disassembled the unit. First off is the mount and you can see our bearing in the mount and the rubber surround. Now we have a washer and we're going to typically reuse this washer and our spring plate. We're also on this application going to reuse the spring plate. Now note the size and length of the machined area of the shock. You can see this is different from some of these others. We have larger diameters, we have longer lengths. So our camber kit is going to be matched to this and we may have to use various adapters to make the final fit. Now in coming together, note that the bearing in this camber kit has a much larger inside diameter than our shock shaft. So this has to be adapted to the shock shaft size. On the bottom, we'll use this flanged washer. This flange here will fit right into the bearing and now the inside diameter matches the shock shaft. Also note the nut is the same way. It has the flange, which from the top side will also fit into the bearing, but through the top here. So let's do a quick assembly of this unit, which is one of the most common units that you'll have. First we do our spring plate. When we're doing our final assembly, don't forget your spring rubbers, you're still going to use these. So we have our spring plate, the stock original washer, our flanged adapter, then we have the camber kit, make sure it fits on top of the flange, and then our flanged nut. And this will hold everything together. We would normally have our compressed spring here, and once we have the nut tightened, we can then decompress the spring and we're ready to go. Now don't forget, as we showed you in the prior segment, you have to determine which is right and left and how to clock the mount. The clocking can be done when you're back to the car, but when you're doing this assembly, you have to pay attention to which one is going to be right and which one is going to be left. Now additionally, with all of these designs, what we're watching for are a couple of things. The length of this shoulder here, we don't want the nut to come down and contact the shoulder and thread no further before it stops on the bearing. We want it to stop on the bearing so that the bearing is held tight down on the shoulder down here. That's where these various different heights of washers and so on come into play and we'll show you on some of the other applications. The other issue, when it's together, whatever distance between the spring plate and the mount we want that so that the mount does not hit the spring plate. So on this application, both the stock washer and this tapered flanged washer will give us some extra height, again, so the mount can go together and not hit the spring plate. It can turn without hitting. This is where we fully recommend that you do what we call a dry stack on your shock to figure out what combination of pieces, washers, and adapters you need to get that proper stack so the mount is tightened with the nut. The nut is not coming down on this shoulder first. You can do that without the spring in place. That's why we call it a dry assembly or a dry stack so that you don't have to battle the spring while you're trying to do this. Once you've got it figured out, put your spring on with your isolators Put your stack on, go ahead and decompress, and you're all set, ready to go. All right, now let's take a look at some of the other variations that you may come across on your particular model. This upper strut mount is the integral style mount. The mount and the spring seat are one piece. 
Now when we take this off the vehicle, obviously we're taking off the spring seat as well. So therefore the camber kit needs to have a spring plate. So these kits will come with spring plates. These are plates from two different kits. This particular plate goes with this mount on this shock absorber. So we would assemble them in the same way as we did over here on this one with the spring plate going on, then any washers, and then the mount. Now, we'll find that we see this diameter of this uh, sleeve is larger in diameter, and it's also longer than this one. So we'll have various different types of adapters. We have this long adapter with a flange at the bottom. This one is designed to go in the top. You can see the bearing here. This is designed to go down and fit over the bearing to extend the length of the inner race so that we can tighten down appropriately on our shock shaft. So this one would go on, this piece would go on, and then our nut. Again, what we're shooting for with that, we don't want our nut to tighten down on this shoulder. We want it to tighten onto the bearing just before the shoulder. That's where we'll play with different lengths of these adapters. Again, this style, if needed, goes on top. Now, if it's not needed, if it's a short one like this, and this happens to be in the kit, we won't use this. These kits are designed for various different applications. Some of the others we'll see, this spring plate here has a bushing adapter right in the middle of it. Again, this is to change the size of the machined area on the shock. This takes it uh, from a small size up to a larger size for the camber kit to physically fit over. So this one would fit down on this particular shock in that manner. Again, if with this, if your kit has this, and this will not fit on the shock, you take it out and put the plate and the mount on without this bushing. Some of the other adapters, we have this serrated with an internal cut on it. This is similar to this one here. This fits into the bottom side and that fits right over the bearing race. And we would use this if we need extra height, again, to make up for a long shaft. Additionally, the diameter is smaller than the diameter of the bearing itself. So we would use that, again, as needed. If we have these small thin sheet steel washers, slightly cupped. These are dust seals, and they simply go there to protect the bearing from dust. Additionally, you may have just a flat, thick washer like this. Again, this may be used below or above. Most typically, this would be used below between a spring plate and the mount to increase height between the spring plate and the mount. Now remember, with all of these different styles, whatever you get for your model, you're matching the diameter and the length. See, this is a larger diameter. In fact, the same camber kit fits this, this, and this. This happens to be an E34 5 Series application from early to late. So the one camber kit actually fits all of these, so it has various different parts in the kit for this long, large diameter, long, small diameter, and short, small diameter shaft. And we'll just, again, use the various combinations of nuts, washers, and adapters, along with spring plates if required, and the mount itself to get a proper stack so that our final diameter matches the diameter of the shaft our length matches the length of the shaft, in fact, is preferable to be slightly longer so the nut will tighten on the bearing itself. 
And we also want to make sure when we're doing our dry stack that the back plate does not hit the spring plate, whether it's the plate that came with the kit or the original spring plate that we're using. Make sure that the back plate, when the kit is compressed, not when it's falling down and, and loose, when it's compressed, does not hit the spring plate. So we can turn. If it hits the spring plate, we'll have a grinding when we turn the uh, wheels. Now one final design, which is unique to just a few vehicles, is this late style here. This upper mount, this is an original upper mount, just has a rubber bushing. There's no bearing. This is used in conjunction with this spring seat, which has a plastic housed bearing in it. These two go together like this and provide our bearing and our spring plate. When we replace this style with the camber kit, we'll get a camber kit that looks like this. Notice there's all urethane and no bearing like there is here. This one replaces this piece. We use our original bearing and spring plate or a new one so we have a new bearing. Fits together like this. Does the same thing as the original. No additional spacers required. It comes with this cupped washer which goes here when we go together. And this spacer which goes up top before we put our nut on. These are common to say for instance the E39 5 series uh, V8 applications. Uh, E46 M3 also uses one like this as well as others. Now you did see the differences here. This is a stage one kit. This is a stage two kit. Notice the stage one kit has a lot of urethane for vibration isolation and an actual ball bearing. This is recommended for most street applications and maybe some light track use. This one has a spherical bearing. This is a stage two. Less urethane and a spherical bearing. This will give a firmer ride and more vibration transmission through the chassis. You'd use this on a combination street track car. Additionally, when they're being installed in the vehicle, on this kit, this black ring installs on the top side of our sheet metal uh, strut housing in the engine bay. Everything else goes down below. This kit, the whole kit, installs from below and just these washers and the nuts go on on top to distribute the load, but the rest of the kit goes on the bottom. The same would be true for a stage three kit, which is just like this stage two, but there's no urethane at all, just the spherical rod bearing. With that, you should be able to figure out how to install the camber kit on your BMW or Mini. Remember, length of shaft, diameter of shaft, and use the various adapters and spring plates if needed to make the kit fit properly and the nut to tighten down on the bearing itself versus the shock shaft. With that, you should be ready to go and assemble your camber kit. With the mount and strut assembly installed into the vehicle, we'll make our final adjustments within the 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock quadrant, assuming we wish to reduce the negative camber and increase the positive caster, or keep it stock. We can use the alignment markings on the plate for final adjustment references, as well as marking the bearing plate with a permanent marker. If the vehicle sees both street and track use, we may wish to add negative camber for track and reduce it for street. We have this unit set with the stock camber as well as the stock increased positive caster for the M3. When we do go to the track, we will increase our negative camber, then go back to our street setting. In order to adjust the mount, we first loosen the mounting nuts. Now with the nuts loosened, we can use one or two pry bars 
to move the bearing plate into position. After adjustment, tighten the mounting nuts. Here we have both mounts installed and adjusted for our street settings. All right, now that you've seen a few examples of how to install these strut mount style front camber kits, you should be able to handle the installation on your BMW or Mini model. Don't forget that the Bentley Repair Manual will give you the details for strut removal and installation on your specific model. Now, if you've liked this video, please hit your like button. Send us some comments. Let us know what you'd like to see as well. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on Twitter, and you can like us on Facebook as well. And please visit our tech blog at blog.bavado.com for more technical articles and videos as well. Remember that everything you've seen here, all the parts and any specialty tools, are available in our online store at bavauto.com. Now thanks for watching, and we're off to another video.